don't see lords, ladies and gentlemen, young ladies and young gentlemen, welcome to the Action for Children's Arts, Children's Arts Awards 2012. Thank you for coming. The, uh, the J.M. Barry Award is a kind of lifetime achievement award. It's given to someone whose work for children will, like Peter Pan, stand the test of time. A house with a door. Windows one, two, three, four. Ready to play? The worthy recipient of this year's ACA JM Barry Award goes to, as you all know, Baroness Floella Benjamin OBE. Day. It's Monday. They're through the square window. Anything you want to eat, you can buy it at the supermarket. Hello. Do you ever make a wish like Aladdin did on his lamp? She really captured the camera. She really wanted to look at the camera and talk to the kid. And that's the thing you really need to be a good play school presenter. And she had it from day one. Have you ever wondered what it would be like if everything was different? She influenced so many people of my generation and, of course, the generation before. You just used to want to smile. She always made me want to smile because you used to think, this is going to be lovely, this is going to be good. She took play school to another level, really. What goes boo-hoo splat? Well, I don't know. What goes boo-hoo splat? Someone crying their eyes out. <laughs> she was very, very professional and very aware of how she communicated to the audience, which is very, very important in a children's programme, of course. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps. I remember going to school and getting the same fabulous beads and, and just kind of wishing I was Fluella Benjamin. The sound man kept saying, I can hear her clicking. And of course it was her beads that he didn't realise for ages. And every time she shook her head or moved or laughed or anything, click, 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 click. Here we go, quick, quick, quick. Here we go, slow, slow, slow. I like short, And the short. music, she tackled the music so well. A lot of play school presenters found it very difficult because we had such a variety of music. But she could cope with anything. She was fantastic. I'd like to play a game that is so much fun and it's not so very hard to do. I think she just had this sort of magnetism. She would always bring you in and take you on that journey. A boy called Jason who lived on the island of Trinidad. That's where steel drums were invented. She has that extraordinary ability to make you feel you know her. Well, I do know her actually, but anyway, even when you don't know her, you feel that she's talking to you. Rock gently sailboat in the midday sun. And those programs, when you look back at them now, they were the essential precursors of everything that's being done in that field in television in these days. <laughs> Someone mentioned my name. My strongest memory of Flo is the two of us doing a sketch for Play Away, where we played two witches who met in a supermarket. Been hiding yourself? I've been on holiday to France. Did you go by hovercraft? No, witchcraft. Seeing her made me believe it was possible for me to present. She taught me a lot about what you can actually offer and use your screen presence to really good effect. She has the authority to speak with great passion about children's issues and she has the personality that means people listen to her. I looked down at my hands and desperately tried to understand why my colour would disturb people. Why all the fuss in England? It's a tribute to Floella's very positive, constructive approach to improving life for people. The idea of having a Minister for Children was very, very important. I think she's a good actress. I'd like to see her doing more uh, acting, straight acting and so on. You're standing there and he's kidnapping my son! Kill me! I'm going to kill you! I said, let him go! I think the most enviable thing about Floella is her enthusiasm. It's boundless. I gotta feel my heart coming alive again before the parade. Bye bye. Ribbit royalty. Floella 
dramatically and in pure Fluella fashion, champions the voices of ethnic minorities, as you would expect. Uh, she champions high-quality children's programming, public service television. And then when she's not doing those two things, she's championing more training, better training in the broadcast industry. She's just a truly fabulous person. The sound of the seagull's distant cry His wings like parenthesis drawn in the sky And two white birds clinging like foam to the crest of the wave rolling by The J.M. Barry Award is given annually to a children's arts practitioner whose work in the view of action for children's arts will stand the test of time. It is evident that this could not have been bestowed upon a more deserving person than Baroness Benjamin. You know, for centuries we have great people walking the earth. Motivators, leaders, and they come in all shapes and sizes and disguise. They can be actors, they can be boxers, they can be civil rights leaders, but they are few and far between. And they all touch people's lives. I call them masters. I am privileged and proud and happy and honored to be a friend of a true master. Uh, now, um, J.M. Barry, of course, he's been quoted many, many times. I'm sure we'll be quoted again. But one particular quote I found that I thought summed up Flo. He said, those who bring sunshine to the lives of others cannot keep it from themselves. So big kisses to our Miss Sunshine. Many congratulations on your award, and we are very proud to be part of the achievement. Our unofficial family motto is, who would have thought? And um, as I stand here and hear the lovely kind words that everyone's spoken and watching that film again, um, I, I thought of those words and thought of my grandma and granddad looking down on you and who would have thought? This is uh, an extract from Coming to England uh, and it's called Survival. I so clearly remember the first time I experienced the thrill of it. On a cold morning as I huddled under my thick blanket, the smell of the paraffin lamp still lingering in the air, I was awakened by a stillness, an eerie quietness. A strong clear light shone through the curtains, not the usual murky greyness, but a magical light. I sensed something was different about this day as I slowly went to the window. I lifted up the curtains and wiped the condensation from the pane. Then I saw it, a pure white blanket that dazzled me. It was a whiteness I had never seen before and everything was covered in it. I gasped in wonderment. The landscape looked so beautiful it took my breath away. Surprisingly, it didn't feel cold. The beauty had warmed my heart. I had fallen in love with snow. We spent the rest of the day watching from the windows. Mommy didn't send us to school because it was snowing, but she got told off by the headmistress, who said next time it, it snowed, we would have to come to school. It wouldn't hurt us. We would survive. Hello everyone. Um, yeah, I love this book because it's so important to my mum and I've seen how important it is to other people, children and adults alike and there's so many parts of it that make you happy and make you sad, make you cry, make you laugh and uh, the passage I'm about to read has already been mentioned um, but it sums up my mother and always makes me laugh so um, I'd like to share that with you. <clears throat> There was one English custom at school that got me into deep trouble. It started off quite innocently. I must have looked lost and alone because a group of children asked me to join in their, play their game with them. 
one person was chosen to be it, and the rest of us had to run away and try not to get caught. This was a new game to me, but I loved running and loved playing games, so I was most enthusiastic and very keen to take part. A boy called Norman was chosen to be it. <laughs> Everyone ran off, squealing with delight and shrieking with laughter. I ran as fast as I could, dodging all the other children in the playground. But Norman was hot on my heels and eventually caught me. What happened next was most unexpected. He grabbed me and gave me a full kiss on the lips. No one had ever kissed me like that before. That sort of kissing was for grown-ups. I was so shocked by this display of passion that I smacked him in the face and gave him a black eye. <laughs> poor old Norman. In fact, it turned out to be poor old me. What I hadn't realised is that we were playing kiss chase and that Norman, the heartthrob of the class, <laughs> had picked me to chase and kiss. All the girls had a crush on him, and because he'd chosen me, a newcomer to kiss, and to make matters worse, I'd beaten him up, they <laughs> sent me to Coventry. Being sent to Coventry was another new custom, and an uncomfortable one that I had to live with. I wondered if anyone would ever break the silence and speak to me again. To my surprise, the first one to do so was Norman. What a nice guy he turned out to be. We became friends at school and often walked home together, but he never kissed me again. <laughs> <laughs>
of joy and happiness as I accept this prestigious award. Thank you, Action for Children's Arts. Thank you for bestowing this honor upon me. Ah, when I sat there listening to all of that, I just wished that my mommy and daddy could be here today, be alive to see that their little girl is being celebrated this way. Because as you heard, when I came to Britain in 1960, I had to face a lot of rejection and adversity, but I had two of the most wonderful parents any child could wish for. They gave me the love and the confidence to believe in myself so I could go and make a difference to society. And because I did children's programs, it's allowed me to do just that, to go out and make that difference that's so important. My beloved Keith, darling, you are my everything. You know, thank you for supporting me, for guiding me and taking me along our long journey. You've got me to where I am. You are the wing beneath my wings, and I love you for that. Everything we do. <laughs> the wind beneath my wings, that means we share everything, we support each other. So this award is for you too, my darling. So once again, thank you, Action for Children's Arts. Thank you for giving me this honor. You can't imagine how it, much it means to me. Can't imagine just how much joy I'm feeling today. I cried when I heard people talking about me. I laughed, but most of all, I knew when I sat there that like you, Action for Children's Arts, I will continue to keep on fighting for children's well-being so that they can grow up knowing that they're loved and are special the way you have all made me feel today. Thank you all very much.